Hi, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get stuff in the ring with the greatest tag team in podcast history. Just Freaking Wrestling, the JFW Podcast, hosted by Travis D. I'm Dizzle J. And, uh, you know, J, um, we, we have uh, we have someone with us today, but I'm going to go ahead and let you make the introduction to it. <laughs> so we actually have the infamous Mental Mary, since she couldn't come up with a different name. Right. Oh, you know, that's what we're going with, Okay. <laughs> That's, that's exactly what we're going with. We have nothing else to go with. That's what we're going with today. Today, my name's Mary. Well, then it might be typhoid, Mary. <laughs> God damn it. It's <laughs> get so Mary. Man, I, I, yeah, I, it's I, Mary today. It's just I, Mary today. It's Mary today. today. I, no, I just, I just got her out of the hospital. Sh- Sh- Shapiro has very little <laughs> limits on how to sign somebody out. So I got a sticker and everything. <laughs> yeah, oh, my God. <laughs> Perfect. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, well, that's a contagious laugh. Yeah, that, that is a very contagious laugh. Um, Thanks. It's gonna be weird though, calling you Mary. It's like because Cause we're not Mary. <laughs> I don't know. You're fired. <laughs> For, oh my god! <laughs> All right, well, that's funny, Mary. Uh, yeah. Thank you for finally showing up. Oh, no problem. Um, it's been about uh, you know, it's weird. It's like we're we're almost on like two years of doing this. Yeah, I saw it on uh, Facebook and Memories. Yeah. It was pretty neat. And then 49th show. Yeah, next week. Next week we hit our 50th. 50th, Ooh, 50th yeah. show. So I know. Right? Which is weird to think because if we were consistent in what we wanted to do, we'd actually be at like episode like 105 right now oh, or definitely. something like that. But um, no, we're going to hit 50 next week. Huge milestone. I'm excited for it. Um, I can't remember exactly what we had planned for next week, but I know we have something going on. I just can't really remember. I, I know we're doing the Ask Us Anything questions, which I believe you got a ton we of questions. We get a bunch of them. Shout out to um, to the group that I do uh, Marvel Contest of Champions with. Uh, they literally poured in a bunch of questions. And sure, we obviously uh, had a couple other ones that hit Facebook and stuff from uh, actually about, about a month ago when we wanted to do like a Q&A yeah. thing. Bring those back, and it's still open for everyone. We got another week before uh, the fiftieth episode hits, so keep the questions coming in. I, absolutely, I think Mary. I think um, no, not you, but your sister actually uh, issued uh, submitted a question too. Oh, Becca? Yeah. No, the other one, Brandy. There we ah! go. Right, you had a fifty fifty shot. Right, either one or the other. <laughs> you had a fifty fifty shot there, but yeah, no, she uh, she um, she put one in there too, so I'm excited for that oh, one. And, uh, yeah, and a lot of them, um, you know, like. You would think like you get a lot of like you know who's your favorite wrestler, you know right. who's your favorite tag team or something. They're not. They're actually like they're like follow up two part kind of questions that they really have to explain out. So it's pretty cool to have to go in depth about it. And it's gonna be one thing where we're gonna have to look at the questions to get like those good answers. Those are the more fun questions, I think, because it's it's super easy to ask who your favorite wrestler is, who your yeah. favorite tag team is, and I mean you're gonna come up with list upon list. So when you have something where you actually have to dig into. It, it just makes it more fun to talk about. Yeah. Like, dig inside yourself or, like, dig inside, like, wrestling? <laughs> I just wanted to make... I just, I, I just wanted... No, no. It made perfect sense. I just wanted to, like, fucking make you awkward. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. but, uh... Obviously, when we started out, we kind of gave everyone a little background about us and, like, how we got involved in wrestling and everything. So, why don't you tell all, your li- um, all our listeners... Um, what what your first memory is of wrestling, how you got into it and all that stuff, and, uh, you know, who your favorite wrestler is. And so, you know, just kind of give us some feedback on how your wrestling um, wow. fandom kind of started. My wrestling fandom started off uh, with Alicia, my best friend, my roommate. Oh, my God. I thought you were going to yeah. say Alicia Fox. <laughs> <laughs> Alicia Fox. <laughs> my best friend. Oh, yeah. God. We're, we go crazy together, you know? No, I thought, like, I thought, like, I thought you started, like, being fans because of, like, Alicia Fox. Alicia I was like, Fox. oh. Oh, I love her. She's amazing. That makes love sense. Her. Um, <laughs> I get that. She's definitely, I'm a fan favorite of Alicia. And, but Alicia Page is the one who got me into it because we would go to um, our friend Matt. We'd go to his mom's house and it'd be like me, Alicia, Chad, Timmy. And we would get Subway and then all these also chips. There, and, oh, Chad, oh, you were oh, there. Yeah, I, was, oh, I was also oh, there. there. Not, yeah, I not forgot. The beginning? Right. You weren't there in the beginning. I was always there. We used to go out to Matt's mom's house. Yeah. We went to DJ's really house there? a couple of times. Yeah. Oh, shit. I guess you yeah, were. Yeah, we went, we went to Chad and Steph's apartment a couple so we, times. So we came. Yeah, yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. Why I did I not think it, yeah. you would come till later on? No. Why, what do you mean later Maybe on? Maybe it's because you were young. I, I to, was so like. I used to go with you guys when we went to B dubs to watch it. Oh, shit. Yeah. That was oh, shit. Yeah. 
when we get the three <laughs> three long three, tables. Like, and Alicia, because yeah. you know I'm awkward. So, but uh, yeah, yeah, because that. And then John Cena, like the whole can't see me thing happened, and it changed my life. Okay, so did so did you become a fan of wrestling around like 2002, 2003 when Cena came in, or did you used to watch it like back before um, that? Right when John Cena had like come to be a good guy from being the rapper Cena, I didn't know him then, but I knew him as when he started doing the colorful shirts so, in the band. So right after the Doctor of Thugonomics. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you never really were part of, like, the whole, like, ECW, WCW era of it. It was more like the no. ruthless aggression on, like, after, like, post-ACW invasion, uh, given. Okay. Yeah. But I did know Ric Flair, because my dad actually used to watch wrestling well, everyone Ric Flair. when we yeah. were really, really young. And I remember HBK and Ric Flair, because Ric Flair had the coats. So mm-hmm. me and my sister Brandy would have the Ric Flair coats all the time. Be like, woo! You know, <laughs> yeah. Marcus, fun. your dad is probably one of the coolest guys going to a oh, show. Oh, I know. He's oh, awesome. I, I, he he told marvelous Mike totally got into everything. Marvelous when we took him Mike. <laughs> That's what we call. Oh, oh we're like M and M's. Mental Mary and marvelous Mike. <laughs> well, this will be the last time she's on this show. I just like how you're moving around like you're like you're in a straight jacket. <laughs> like you're like you're clearly free to move your arms. <laughs> you just hold them at your side, swaying back and forth. Like in your head, you're singing "Ring Around the Rosie." It's yeah. like the, the Irish uh, river dancers who don't who don't move the top; they just move their legs. I don't like sway. Like you know, like when you stand and you sway. It's like you sit and you sway. No, because I'm, I'm not a psycho. <laughs> Oh fuck! <laughs> Holy shit! So you said your favorite wrestler is John Cena. Yes. <laughs> so, um, I'm gonna tell you a lot of why that's wrong. Oh! <laughs> I don't remember asking for your opinion. It doesn't matter. It's my <laughs> show. Are <laughs> <laughs> are the people here fly? Is yeah. Because you can't see him. <laughs> yeah, because he's not in the ring no more. Uh, he's taking a break. Every great wrestler is taking, so taking a uh, break. I'm so glad he's The Rock's taking a break. Um, the Rock will be on the movie. Yeah, no, Triple H is Rock. running, and he only does one wrestling show a year, which is WrestleMania. Triple H, and that's Triple H needs to never wrestle again. Vince McMahon was in the ring more than HBK was when he was running the business. And HBK, since what? he's become where he's at, he's in the ring way less what? than Vince McMahon was. HBK has gotten in the ring once or, in the past HBK. year. What's his name? Triple H. <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> it's the K's or whatever. I, we got, no, I got to go back here for a minute. Okay. So you said Vince McMahon was in the ring more times than Shawn Michaels? I meant to say Triple H, but I kept saying So Vince McMahon was in the ring more times than Triple H? Yeah, well, like, while period? he was running the business. Since Triple H took the role of where he's at, he's yeah. barely ever in the ring. But Vince McMahon was constantly a part of it. But Vince McMahon could be. I just think that if you're going to narc on John Cena for not being in a ring, then you had to narc on everyone else. Narc? Or whatever. Knock. <laughs> Knock. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where to go with you. <laughs> for real, though. Oh, my God. Okay, so... <laughs> first of all, first of all, this like, man hasn't been in a match since, like, 2005. That's a lie. He was in a match, like, a couple... Years ago, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, a couple years ago. 2005. This is 2019, right? Yeah. yeah. 2019. What, who did he fight a couple years ago? I don't remember. I just know he was there. No, he was in the no. ring. He goes to the ring to make announcements and stuff being part of the owner, but he hasn't had, I think, his last real match. Isn't he going to be having a match with Kofi? Soon? No. Isn't Vince? that, like, going to be a thing? They're talking about Vince McMahon and Triple H. Where are we at right now? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm all over. <laughs> Okay, anyways, for the love of God. <laughs> the, the bewilderment in this room right now. Uh, anyways, no, I'm going to tell you why John Cena shouldn't be your favorite wrestler. Okay. Because your favorite wrestler should be someone who, like, actually wrestles well. And that's John Cena. He's no, the standard. No, he, he was just a poster child. Uh, that's why he's the face of WWE. Not anymore. Every, every advertiser John Cena is in every yeah. advertisement. Not anymore. No. Yeah. No, they yeah. Fu- they Their fu- newest commercial, they're all working out. Guess who's in there? John Cena. Seth Rollins. John Cena. Fucking Elias is in there. Elias is in there, for God's sake. But so is John Cena. He's the very last one. He's in the blue shirt. He's lifting the Yeah, because he's he's pretty much Hulk Hogan now. He's he's that that gimmick. Yeah, he's a gimmick. But he spent his time. His whole career is a gimmick. He doesn't need to evolve anymore. People have to live up to his standards. He never evolved. Oh, he evolved and then stopped. He never evolved. He's the number one rated superstar. No. Yeah. 
No. Everybody's first. Not, not in the world where AJ yeah. Styles. Yeah, fucking AJ oh, Styles. Oh, God, AJ Styles. AJ sucks. Styles, by far, God. the best. AJ Styles, Styles okay. Randy Orton. Randy Orton is great. Legend killer. No. No, Orton sucks too. Oh, man. No, no. no I'm sorry. Yeah, no, he's, he sucks. Legend killer. Maybe he'll kill Cena. He never once killed anybody. But <laughs> <laughs> well, he shouldn't. I don't, think, I don't think he ever even ended like someone's career, show. really. Like, when you sit back and think uh, about it. Denny? No. No, he, he put a couple people on the shelf, but that was it. Yeah, and they came back. Wasn't that Matista? Oh, no, that was Sean no. Cena who put Matista out. That's right. Oh, to Batista, he didn't put him out. No, but even Batista came back. He they quit. all come back. Even HBK yeah. came back. He promised he would never come back again to the ring and wrestle after his retirement, Money but he did. Right. Yeah. They all come back. The the legend killer never killed anyone. Not for real life. Like, not even real life. Not even not even in like the like the fucking like storylines and shit. Yeah, he kicks someone in the head, they're gone for a couple months. They eventually fucking come back. Well, he had his spear thing. What? What spear or, thing? What? You know the <laughs> The RKO. <laughs> That's it, the RKO. <laughs> Kind of looks like a spear. <laughs> this is your idea. This is a terrible idea. This is thirty three percent, man. This is what fucking happens. I'm knocking myself down to twenty three percent. God, I don't know if that's fucking like commitment to the podcast or brain cells at that yeah. fucking point. Anyways, no. nepotism at its finest. No, nepotism. no, and that's the best. And that's the best thing when it comes to professional wrestling is. Yeah. Um, you have the you have the right and the opportunity to love any oh, yeah. wrestler you want, regardless of who they are and everything. John Cena, yeah, I don't see him being like not even in the top five or ten of the best wrestlers in the world, but as a performer, he he definitely is one of the best when it comes to uh to uh, microphone uh, promos and stuff yeah, like that. Absolutely that great. Oh yeah, wrestling ability, not even close. It's just because he was. And it happens a lot, like especially when we get like those kind of like those bigger, bulky kind of guys. Oh, see, he's not yeah. fast, no, but he is a powerhouse, and he wrestled. He, yeah, and then, people rarely ever got injured in the ring with John Cena. No. Well, see, it's it's kind of like like where he's at right now. Like now that he kind of like stepped away yeah. and it's like doing a lot more. Like when he was doing like the martial arts stuff with uh, I think it was Jackie Chan out there in China, he learned a lot more about flexibility and stuff like that. I think if he adapted that stuff into his career when he first started, he may have been more of a. Um, like high spot kind of wrestling. I think he did more of a like a instead of just a a women and a friend or a kid friendly wrestler. Yeah. He'd have gotten guys like us on board. Where even though I still give him a lot of credit for what he has done, yeah. but it, you know he it still isn't. He did the sit down or was it the sit down stunner or whatever he tried doing. Do neither but at least one he of was you open. know fucking wrestling moves? <laughs> he was open to try new things, though. <laughs> the sit-down stunner? I mean, you mean a stunner? I mean, he boot camp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I'm, I'm so sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe I should have taken a shot of whiskey again. This <laughs> what the hell is wrong okay, with you people? It's rubbing off. <laughs> it's rubbing off. I did like that sit-down stunner thing was going on. It's a stunner. <laughs> You're talking about the springboard start. Yeah, springboard yeah. start. Oh, yeah. oh, fancy. Well, no, yeah, because he added that, and then that stupid, uh, goofy-ass thing he did in, um, I think it was Australia, where he did, like, the fucking punch. Aww. I don't even know. I don't even remember that. He did some fucking goofy punch. It was a fucking gimmick uh, move. But, yeah, I mean, he had the AA, which is just a modified Death Valley driver. He had the five knuckle shuffle, which was a fucking stupid thing, too. And it's huge. It's Everybody dumb. knows the five knuckle shuckle. Whatever. So it's a Shuckle? <laughs> Yeah, I told totally you that word. Shuckle. <laughs> shuckle. Shuck, shuck, shuck. Shuck, oh my god. Uh, shuckle? Uh, I can't even, I don't even know the real word right now. Shuffle. Shuffle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fucking hate. <laughs> fucking hate, I think we just need to post a video of yeah. her just laughing. No, okay, so, moving on from John Cena. Yeah. Um, being a woman, yes. How do you feel about the uh, whole women's revolution going from divas to women superstars? How's that? Oh, how have you seen that from? Because we yeah. never really had like a woman's like perspective on it. It's so something from you, they needed to do. It's like because calling them divas was one thing, divas queen, but it made more to represent them as women. And then the the revolution that they're doing, we all have to think Stephanie McMahon, because really, if she didn't get to the position that she was in, would this revolution ever actually have started? Even though 
re- it's come down in history, but it didn't really start evolving until Stephanie McMahon got in that place and then was able to run Raw and change the women's division as a whole and then change it from divas to women. So Stephanie McMahon is a huge part in this. And I know every woman's champion wants to be like, oh, I'm the reason for the women's revolution, but they're actually, they're not. It's Stephanie McMahon. She's the reason for the change and she's the reason for the women's revolution. But she's also the first one to be forgotten about because she isn't known, she's known as a wrestler that every diva or woman's championship, they all want to say it was them. Yeah, they contributed to it and the things that they brought to the table definitely contributed to it. But if it wasn't for Stephanie McMahon, I don't think it would have ever happened. Do you agree with that? No. Yeah, I disagree with you. I don't. It was Triple H that actually started Divas Revolution. It was Stephanie McMahon. I, I, I'll, it won't. I'll, I'll tell, I'm going to tell you oh, why. he started in NXT. I'm going to tell you why Triple H started Divas Revolution. Because when Triple H took over NXT, he started having the women uh, get trained just like the men. And it's because of that training that put them at the pinnacle that they're at. Because it's showing them they can do more than pulling hair and clawing and slapping. So you don't think well, Stephanie McMahon had anything to do with Raw that she ran because she made those decisions. No, she's just a fan. That's why like evolved. Anything. NXT is not okay, as popular. Well, real, real quick before we continue okay. on this. Do you want to look at this like, like reality or do you want to look at it like a gimmick? This is a reality. It's because of Stephanie McMahon that there's change. Okay, so do you want to look at this like she actually ran Raw, or do you want to look like this like she was... She ju- does run Raw. No, she doesn't. Yeah, she yeah, runs that's, Raw. That's, 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 her, that's her character. Yeah, that's a gimmick. That's that's and that's a have, work. Are your opinions facts? Yes. Yeah. Well, would you like to read them? Read what? Your facts. How you know that it wasn't her. How do you know? How do I know that she didn't start Divas Revolution? Yeah. Because you got to look at how everything worked out. I, First I, off, if you t- if you listen to any podcast, any uh, interview, any shoot, that any wrestler did, they tell you the same thing. Everything starts and stops with Vince McMahon. He is the final saying it regardless. Stephanie has no say whatsoever in that company other than I think she's in charge of merchandise. Really? So, that's yeah. You, that's what you think? No, yeah. no that's, that, what that's what it is. That's what it is. So you guys think she had nothing to do with the women's no. change no. whatsoever? The, the she women, had no the women, opinion and no fact. Women, women in wrestling did not even start changing with WWE. Women wrestling started outside of WWE. Yeah. Oh no, we definitely changing. know that. Like and NXT, you're talking. Oh yeah, no, no she no, she was a NXT part. is WWE or TNA. T and TNA has a lot to do with it. The women's division, yeah. the knockouts division, TNA had a lot to do with yeah. it because those women, they uh, are the Rosemary's, warriors. the Gail Kim's. Yeah. ODBs. Well, even Lucha Underground had a part of yeah, it. Yeah, Lucha, if yeah. Lucha Underground, the women go with them. They, yeah, they, they fight, fight the men. Yeah. It's, it's a yeah, thing. and I'm not saying that Stephanie had no part whatsoever, but she didn't create it. She didn't She didn't build it. She, but how do you know? Because when you sit there and look at how everything works. But how do you know? You do the research. That's yeah. how we know. Or, well, show me the research that you found. Why would I do po- that? Because you're okay, full of like, shit. You, you, show, you, you <laughs> show me the proof. Show me the proof that she started All it. All right, I will. Challenge accepted. Do it. I'm not doing it right now. I oh, okay. Well, what do you want us to do right <laughs> so, now? <laughs> so, I'm going to tell you how it is. Oh, how you think it is. <laughs> sure. Okay. So, the Divas, <laughs> the Women's Revolution wouldn't have started if they didn't train the wrestlers like they did down in NXT. If which NXT, NXT demanded to take over Raw, it wouldn't have happened. Well, she no. never took over Raw. She did. She runs Raw. No. She doesn't run Raw. Yes, she does. She's a no. chief she brand. Has She's Raw, not even part and, of uh, her brother has... No. no. Okay, yeah, first off. First off, What's his name? that storyline doesn't even exist anymore. No, but it's true. She runs around here. No. Okay. Yeah. First off, no. It's a storyline. It's fake. That's not real. It is real. It's no. not real. How do you know? Because, because they're not in charge because of Because that's how it is. You can even like, watch the shoot videos and interviews that Triple H, Vince McMahon, Shane McMahon, Stephanie McMahon all do. I all they are, they're just you. faces to make a competitive like aspect between Raw and SmackDown. I guarantee that's why you she had a lot of saying it. Why would Triple H be... But she don't, okay, first of all... Okay, so if oh Triple H is one who did it, obviously Stephanie was the neck that ran it. The neck? Yeah, he's her bitch. The neck. What does that mean? He might be the head of the company, but she's the neck that moves. He's it. not even the head of the company. No, so he's you're saying he's Vince the head McMahon of the is the head division. Of the company. No, I like didn't. He's, he's, he's a reason for the okay, change. First off, first of all, I never said that he's the head of the women's division. I said it wouldn't have started if it wasn't for him. It, that's just like the whole, whole reason Bobby Roode is there, AJ Styles is there, Finn Balor oh, is there, Simone Jones. They're all there because Triple H went to Vince and said, hey, right. you need he to found, give these people a chance. People. Right. So they allow him to have the opportunity in NXT. And that's where. 
training took place in NXT to move up. And that's where Sa- Sasha and Bailey, Alexa uh, Bliss, Paige. Charlotte Flair, uh, Paige. Sasha they, Bailey Paige, suck. first first out on Raw wins women's it's, it's not, No, it's not. It's no, not Paige even, was great, but she was no AJ Lee. For AJ Lee to lose to Paige was a fault to them. They should have never done that. AJ Lee was a better wrestler than Paige. Paige is sloppy. AJ Lee was leaving. Uh, of course she was because of the whole bullshit with CM Punk. Yeah, so that's that, her fault. That's sucks. on her. But no, Paige shouldn't have beat AJ Lee technically. Paige, that's AJ Lee was awesome. So, so you live in the world where you think everything in WWE is real. No. But but that's how it is. Yeah, that's what you're that's saying. That's exactly that's what you're what saying. That's what you're saying. No, that's what you're I'm saying. I'm saying. You Cause just you're, said Because you're, you're saying that Stephanie runs Raw, Shane runs SmackDown, AJ Lee never should have lost to Paige. Yeah. But, but these things happen for a reason. All right, the that's politics. Why, yeah, politics. But don't you watch it for the storyline? I don't need to anymore because I know everything. So why do you watch it? Why do I watch it? Yeah, if you know everything. Same reason people watch fucking, so uh, yeah, soap operas, for example, or fucking like 16 and pregnant and shit like that. It's, <laughs> it's, it's amusing. It's, it's entertaining. Insane, yeah. But the thing is, I just watch it because especially when I was doing the wrestling, when I went to the schools and stuff, I liked watching it to kind of see an idea of how a, like, even a story in a match works itself out. Where the high spots is, where the comeback is, and all that other stuff. And that's the only reason so I So really, it. don't you think if we're going about storytelling, it was the writers that came up with the women's division? No. Because, like I said, everything starts to end with Vince McMahon. He decides what happens. So he finally decides now when uh, Stephanie starts running Raw and takes over Raw to okay. start the women's division. Because that's you, how she it, does not really you run stop Raw. No, that. but that's what it happened when she started. No. When that storyline okay, happened. So when the storyline, okay, so you could when admit the storyline story story happened, okay. that's when the women divisions evolved. No, it goes no. hand in hand. Yes, it no. did. No, women's yes, revolution happened did. before that. It, mm-hmm. You're talking to someone who only watches Raw and SmackDown. Yeah. And some, no, sometimes. but you guys aren't even following this. What you're saying is like matching up. As soon as she took over no, the Raw, no, tri- you're not as listening. As soon as Triple H as took over NXT, no. As soon as she took over Raw, that's when the women the women started getting more than one match. And then the women started getting two matches. Then all of a sudden, let's have the Super James. Let's have the women's have the same matches as as the men. Let's have SmackDown versus Raw. Shane brother versus sister. That's what started the women's division be more popular. Was the feud between Shane McMahon and Stephanie McMahon when she took over Raw? The women got more time on TV. Well, yeah, because they split the brands up. They had to get more time. But it there. was because of it's Stephanie a, it's McMahon. A, it's, no, it's not. Okay. And it's the same thing with the Cruiserweight division. That's why 205 Live was on Raw. But no one really pays attention to it. It's like the it's like the part where you're like, oh, I need to go get my pop or whatever. It's like the break my time. Pop. <laughs> my pop. Mm. Holy shit. Well, 205 Live isn't on Raw anymore. No. So that's... They don't even have it. That's cast aside. It's on Tuesday. It's on the WD Network. They get oh. for nine ninety five nine a month. Yeah, nine ninety nine. Yeah, for new subscribers, get the first month free. Are you out of your mind? We don't get shit. We don't get none. Nope. We don't get damn That is shitty. But to to get past Advertise that, to get past that, because we, we <laughs> we're, we're over that. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're getting way too deep into your nonsense and shit like that. <laughs> yeah, but I totally think it's Stephanie McMahon had a big had a big role play in it. Yes, I agree. She had a role in it, but she didn't start it. <laughs> so we can agree because to she disagree. Yes. 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 <laughs> What's with your face? Go ahead. All right, so this week's Freaking Five, we did the best finishers for females. Yeah. Uh, we only had one person comment on those tables. And <laughs> she sat at the table? Yeah. She sat at the table. <laughs> right here. Actually, I had really good ones. I was actually really trying to find Mae Young's finisher because it's never been really talked about, and I could not find it. Like, I researched for hours and could not find a finish for, for Mae Young, so I... Could not find it. I kept getting the May Young. Um, uh, what's that thing called? The May Young. Oh, you know where the girls wrestle. May Young classic. Classic. Yeah, I kept getting all those videos. That's all I could find. That's all that would show up for me. So yeah. anyway, sorry. Well, this is your segment, bro. Go ahead and give us your list, Mary. I have to get it. Up. What? I got it. So prepared. I got. I am. I got someone it. less prepared than me. Okay, so I said Trish Stratus. The Stratus Faction, Lita, the Lita Salt, Charlotte Flair, the Natural Selection, AJ Lee, the Black Widow, and Natalia, the Sharpshooter. Stratus Faction, is that the Bulldog or the Kick? That's, that's where she was the... That's someone off the ropes, the Bulldog. Her legs and say, whoop. <laughs> when she springboards off. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, because like, what's the other thing called? Like the chick kick or some shit. Yeah, the oh, chick God. kick. Gotcha. But I don't know. Ooh, the sharpshooter to me is overplayed. Oh, it's classic. It's classic, but it's overplayed and it's done by so many others. But Natalia does it the best. She really does put her heart and soul into that move. What the sharpshooter? Yeah. She's Owen the only Hart. one that's like, oh, Owen like Hart you just see it. That's the sharpshooter. Well, the best. obviously. If you go back, you Isn't want... that her dad? No, no. her uncle? They're yes. all related. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Even though Bret Hart was the one that like perfected the whole structure, yeah. I think Owens was actually a lot better. Stings is kind of goofy. Stings was kind of goofy. Yeah. Rocks wasn't that bad either. But. But she's the best woman. All right. So you had you had uh, lead assault. You had the satisfaction. The uh, natural selection. The um, black widow. The black widow. Who, who's the black widow? AJ Lee. That's AJ Lee's the uh, submission. submission. Yeah, it's a. And uh, what was your last one? Uh, the sharpshooter by Sharpshooter by Natalia. Okay. Yeah. Not bad. Nice. I like that. Yeah. What'd you have, Travesty? Yeah. Uh, let me pull that up real quick. Uh, uh, yes. You're just as prepared as she was. <laughs> the phones go black after three seconds. <laughs> yeah, throw that paper pad. <laughs> <laughs> How did Travis get killed on air? <laughs> um, if you guys uh, think I'm vengeful. Uh, yeah, now you gotta find it. <laughs> I'm no. sorry, I'm a little old school. I'm <laughs> using pen and paper. Old would be it. Um, okay, so I got the uh, I got the Eclipse by Ember Moon, oh. which I that, that's uh, yeah, that's, I mean, like it. that's awesome. Um, Liv Morgan's uh, Jersey Codebreaker, which is her modified version of the Codebreaker. Okay, um, this one is like the sideways one, not from like if you'll see it. You'll yeah. Know, okay. Uh, Paige's Rampage, the uh, modified DDT. Um, Bianca Belair, her Bel Air driver, which is also a great nice. one. Nice. Nice. And uh, Rhea Ripley's uh, Riptide. I don't think I've seen that one. It's hard to explain. You have to like Google it. It's it's pretty. It, it's it's a simple move, but it's actually pretty cool. I did do an honorable mention as a sixth one, even though you're not supposed to. And I wanted to mention the figure eight by Charlotte. The figure eight, I, I like that because Charlotte's it's, got some good finishers. She yeah. really does. Well, and that's the thing too because it's like I mean, she took a classic move by her dad and just modified it. Yeah. So. To her, yeah. Yeah, I, I, w- I did have it in there, but as soon as I remembered uh, Bel Air's move, I was like, I got to put that up there. So, so I had uh, the right kick by Ruby Riot. Mm-hmm. I, I just, I, I love a good kick to the face. You're a strike guy, so that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Uh, the Eclipse. Yeah. Ember Moon. Eat the feet by Gail Kim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I hate I hate that that move has become more of a uh, norm move now. Well, and we've always talked about how yeah. people use their finishers as just a an in ring yeah. move during it. It's, it's like it's like it's like back like, hype for the match, the audience. What do you mean? They get crowd response. If they think it's the furniture, crowds tend to respond more. Oh no! Well, what I'm saying is like like Gail Kim used it as a finisher to where other wrestlers use it as like a normal move, like a super. Oh, I think you're saying like yeah, I'm not a big fan oh, okay. of that. It's like back like when the DDT first started on. That was Jake's finisher. Now it's just a normal move to kind of get like a yeah. So, but I mean, so as far as DDT is concerned, over the years it's fine for it to evolve into that because to me the the wrestlers can get stronger and get used to the hit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The last call by Melina. Oh, yeah, Which is a nice little flip over maneuver. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to say it was a, not like the Canadian Destroyer because she did it differently with her feet and not. She's yeah, like, yeah, I got no job on. Uh, the PTO by Paige. PTO. Okay, yeah, her original finisher. Yeah. What was the uh, what was her submission called? The PTO. Paige tap out. Oh, uh, the, what the hell am I thinking? Oh, I'm thinking of the Paige Turner. Never mind. Yeah, the page turn was page the other turn, one. Yeah, it's a PTO. I like, P- I like that. The PTO that. just looks so fucking yeah. ruthless, too. And, you know, have him, have him up off the ground. I mean, mm-hmm. she couldn't do it to someone like Nia Jax. But. Yeah. Well, I, I do like how, like, most, like, especially, like, with the women's division, how they're able to not only to use the submissions, because you're not really used to that, but they're their own submissions. Like uh, like the Black Widow and the PTO. um even Carmella's uh, one that she fucking does. Code of Silence. Yeah. yeah. And I think uh, Naomi even has one, too. But I think it's like a Ring of Saturn kind of thing. Which, like, oh, yeah, locks, yeah, yeah. She likes to have her yeah. on the head. So. And to me, uh, one of the other ones I was going to put was the Glam Slam. Because that, yeah. that was always just a brutal fucking slam. Yeah, around. fucking uh, Awesome Kong did that, but called it like the Implant Buster or some shit. Yeah. Oh, wait, no. I don't, no, 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 no. No, she uh, heard, uh Implant Buster uh, was... Uh, uh, fuck is, who's the Who's the... Bu- Rose. Mandy Rose uses uh, Ugh, Mandy Rose. the implant buster, but she calls it something else. I'm getting her mixed up. She's hot, though. She I'll needs get to get outfits that fit correctly. No, she don't. 
Her yes, outfits no. do not fit. No, you always think, oh, wardrobe <laughs> malfunction is going to happen soon. Her shit's too baggy. <laughs> no. You know who's kind of sure I do think needs to be better with their current hype right now? I love Becky Lynch, and I love the man, but the man's got to have a better finisher. Than the armbar? Yeah, the disarm her. Disarm her. Yeah. Yeah. But well, I, I do love her. I feel like she, need, she needs a more of a striking she needs uh, a finisher. With, the, with her height, the man, she's got to, something has got to be in the man she's movie. She's got to have something you know? a little more manly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, about, uh, what about Lacey's, uh, Lacey Evans' finisher? The, the women's right, that the punch. Women's right. That one was pretty cool. <laughs> it, it makes sense for them to do that, especially after like uh, Big Show and stuff yeah. like that. And, I mean, that's a, she's a big woman and I believe she's ex-military too. Yeah, she was in the Marines. Yeah, yeah. so she... I just listened to uh, Chasing Glory, and she was on it. If you ever get a chance and you want to listen to a, um, the second greatest wrestling podcast, yeah, uh, listen to Chasing <laughs> Glory by uh, Lillian Garcia. Okay. It's really awesome. It's so fucking real. Lillian Garcia? Wait. Yeah, the announcer? Yeah, okay. How is she not in the Hall of Fame? Oh, that's true. she's still... I don't... Well, no, she's, she's, no, she's done. No. She's, she's done. 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 Yeah, she, she's I done. think she'll come back to WrestleMania, right? She comes back very rare for yeah. like anniversary shows. Or, or like she that. does do um, the Hall of Fame, like she does talk through there, or she sings the God Bless America or National Anthem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that God Bless America? No, it's National Anthem. Oh, it's, oh. <laughs> it's called National. Anthem. I can't remember where we go. It's okay. You don't have to. We, we get it. <laughs> you're, you're, you're Canadian. That's fine. <laughs> Anti America. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really having like a break. Right. I'll figure it out. But no, and, and that was a weird thing, you know, because obviously, you know, with the month of March being like Women's Month and everything, right. we're doing a lot of freaking fives when it comes to uh, women. women. Um, this actually, this should be our last one, right? We got one more next week. I I think there like, is one more week. Of there's March. one more. Yeah, we got one more next week. So we'll have so, uh, freaking five. How about freaking five of women that ended Hall of Fame that should be? We will just get out there now. There we go. Ooh, so didn't we'll you guys do, do something like that though? I thought. No, we did. did we? we did Hall of Fame. Oh, Hall of Fame. Oh, no, you did. Who didn't get their credits worth or something like that? Who should have been? We did it for men. Oh, okay. No, That's we did do underrated female superstars. Underrated, but not Hall of Fame. Who should be in Hall of Fame? That's true. Mm, yeah. Fancy. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it could be the same thing, but yeah. just because a, re- a female wrestler is underrated doesn't mean she should be in the Hall of Fame. Not everyone gets in the Hall of Fame. That's why it's prestigious. Nikki Bella will be in the Hall of Fame. You sure? You just put Tori Wilson She's in the there. longest the Bella, twi- the Bella Twins will go in. She's not going to go in by herself. Well, she should. She could, but... Yeah. yeah not the gonna, only way Bree's going to get in there. Yeah, they're not going to put her in without Bree. Yeah. You know, so. But unless she goes I by herself. I don't see them making her two-time. Who? Nikki? 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 Nikki won't go by herself. You never know. I know. I watched the Bella. I promise you. I talked to Vince. It's not happening. You guys are best <laughs> Well, I mean, we know each other. Oh, yeah. He yeah. listens to the podcast. But uh, Brie yeah. Bella officially made her retirement on the Bella show. I saw that. Yeah. Well, I didn't and see that. I heard it. No, she officially it, retired on the show, which, I mean, she did retire in ring, but I decided it was weird that she made her final, final announcement on the show instead of in ring like most wrestlers do. Especially when that was recorded like four or six months ago. Exactly. Yeah. And all wrestler, and she had the comeback, so if people don't watch the show, they're not going to know that she's officially retired and is not coming back because she wants to be with her kids. But Nikki, on the other hand, does not want to retire. Is still very much in her training. So it does make you think, because they are trying to hype Nikki up in the Bella show as a perfectionist. And they're completely separating the twins and showing the differences now. So it makes me wonder, is Nikki going to come back and be her own person? I pray to God it doesn't happen. I do. I, I love Nikki Bella. She is I feel amazing. like she's doing the whole show to bust this knowledge out. Yeah. I, I love Nikki Bella. Like... Both Longest for, women reign champ. Both for her uh, in-ring career. Not true. That is true. She's the longest women's title holding. Divas. Divas. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Divas. Diva. Yeah. So, um, I like I like her. I like when she was all wrestling. I like her promos and stuff like that. She's but got good I skills. don't want I don't want her back the same reason I don't want John Cena back. I don't want Randy Orton wrestling right. anymore. I want the big show to retire. I want Kane to be done. I want all the guys who already established their careers who are at that point to move along to let the other people who are coming up through NXT to have their opportunities. It's time to pass. It's just, it's just, yeah, there's just there's so many people that need the opportunity that need that spot. That's why yeah, as much as it sucks that John Cena and Kurt Angle aren't fighting each other at WrestleMania. I'm okay with it because I really don't want Kurt happen. Angle to wrestle at WrestleMania. I really don't. I just I want them to have those WrestleMania spots open 
for other fucking people. But you gotta have, you have to have the honoraries. You no, gotta have that, no, your... no, that, I'm sorry, no. And that's the thing, too. You, 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 you have to appreciate no, what brought wrestling to what it is. You, you know, need to you have You know how that happens? You get inducted to the Hall of Fame. honor. Which he did that last year. That was his honor. No, There's no reason to. It's an honor to keep wrestling. No. There, there's keep doing too much good talent no what on the roster to waste these spots. Could you imagine a 50 year old man who's feeling bad about himself? looks out to Kurt Angle because he came what he went through with his life personally to come back and come back to WWE and then a person that could relate to him going through through the same life things could see how he made an accomplishment and be like, wow, you know what, he went through so much in his personal life, but here he is at his age still going for it. If he can do it, I can do it. If those people that come back like that aren't for taking the space, they're for a different genre of people who might need to see that encouragement in their own lives. That's what athletes do. They instill, like, passion within our souls sometimes that we don't even know that we have until we see that person come back and it, like, ignites a fire in you. So what about the 24-year-old who busts his ass at the job every single day? He's who could, still young. Who can excel above the 50-year-old man who still has the job that can't quite do the job anymore. It's but honor. he doesn't get that promotion or that movement upwards because that guy's stuck there because of who he knows and what, uh, you know, his nepotism or seniority and shit like right. that. How does that, how does that person look at the idea and says, they all oh, geez, no. Finn Balor. They all have to go so it. Finn Balor has the opportunity to go and do this, but he can't because John Cena's there? Well, shit, if Finn Balor can't even do it, how can I even do it? But Finn Balor hasn't even had the accomplishments that John Cena has. He's he not allowed even, to. No, he has to work towards those. John Cena wasn't John Cena when he first started. Yes, he was. He was no, handed. No, he wasn't. Yes. They literally yes. handed it to him. Yes. No, he it was, was, <laughs> it was <laughs> handed it to him. No. no. And even like oh, Undertaker, yes. he was he was a doobie. He was like one of those guys that were on the ring. A doobie? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know the word I'm looking for, but a he was one of the, a jobber. When he first came out, he was a jobber. When he first the came out, the Undertaker. Wrestling, yes, he was a jobber. The Undertaker, you're talking about like, you're talking about Mark Calloway. Undertaker. The what? Undertaker. You're saying the Undertaker character came out as a jobber? He, when he first started wrestling, as he, Mark Calloway. As Mark Calloway. Mark Calloway, he was a jobber. And then look where he is now, but that's all the sacrifices and things that he did. So, yeah, they should be involved in WrestleMania. No. They made no. wrestling what no. wrestling no. is no. today. No. Yes. They, they I'm get, sorry, they you get, guys are so they like, get the Hall of Fame. Minded. Conform-minded. Yeah. It doesn't even make sense. It does to me. It, the guys who should be on WrestleMania <laughs> are the guys who are there every week, every night, working the yeah. 300 and some odd days But these guys have always put in their time. No, screw them. They did. No. They, they, they screw them in their yeah, time. Yeah, their time is over. Like the Walmart greeters, they shouldn't have those. They we should have Walmart greeters I'm that saying, are older. I'm That's saying exactly the guy what who, you're saying. I'm saying the guy who's doing the Walmart greeting shouldn't be checking me out at the register. Why? Because he's too fucking slow and too fucking old. Yeah. But there's the respect of the spot. No, for him. screw the respect of the spot. He's still got the money. He's still got the he fame. Doesn't. He can go anywhere, go to a they comic con or whatever, too. and sign That's autographs why for a hundred dollars a pop. They have contracts and signing. Why, why the fuck are we talking about Walmart greeters? I don't know. Well, because like, oh, because like when you're older and you retire, you like become a Walmart greeter. And with these well, then older Kurt wrestlers, will go become a Walmart that's greeter. What, that's what it kind of is. It's like Walmart greeting, but in the wrestling world. They are having their matches. Yeah. They're promoting their business. And, and you have to because you're, it is a business. They have to still sell the product of the wrestlers that are there. They have all this merchandise for these specific wrestlers. They have to wrestle so the stuff gets sold so the kids want. It's not just they shouldn't have the time back. No. It's all about sales and sales increase. And they have to get their product sold. Yeah, and so you they screw have your sales increase by putting the same you old thing on TV. because the kid's like, oh, who is that? And then they get so interested because, oh, maybe they love the Ric Flair. Woo! You know? And then, like, this kid's like, wow, that's awesome. And it's fancy coat. And then he wants Ric Flair stuff. You never know what wrestler could, like, spark something inside of somebody. And that's why you have to have j- different genres. If you just had a bunch of young guys wrestling, you would never get to see how good somebody else does something. There is nothing, like, you wouldn't be able to compare it to something. Yeah, we could because there's plenty of videos of those guys doing it in the yeah, past. That's, that's but dumb. why not get to have it? No, in life because you, you. you're you're wasting you're wasting yeah. spots. Yeah, they, they on, can, on these guys. They can have their house shows. They can have their Raw SmackDown yeah. shows. But when it comes to WrestleMania and pay per views, you leave that for the guys who could actually put on a good show. And they can't. So you're they, saying they, like no, HBK no. can't put on a good show. No, Triple no, H can't. No, no, no. So last no, year, no, Ronda changed. Rousey, Triple H, Stephanie McMahon, and Kurt Angle, you. You didn't say that that was one of the best matches no. of WrestleMania? Oh, God, no. Not oh, even close. It was close. one of the best matches of no. WrestleMania. No, that was it was a good it outing was for Ronda Rousey. Yeah. 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 It was a good outing for Ronda Rousey. It was a great introduction for Ronda Rousey. That, that no. was the best no. match. No. The best. No. no. Best. God, no. Jesus. Heck, yes. Oh, my God, no. It was one of the best. 
Oh, you know which one was? AJ and Shinsuke. And uh, AJ that was the best yeah. match. That was terrible. Shinsuke should have won. So you so you watch wrestling just for like just like the cheap pops and the goofy shit. No, not at all. You don't watch it for the wrestling. No, I wa- I watch it for the athleticism. So how can you say that that tag match was the best match on because that show? It was. When you have Shinsuke versus AJ Styles. I mean, shit, you talk about to how me, you talk about how the, the Undertaker still has all this hype and everything. He faced Roman Reigns. But there was, there was women in these matches. Oh, last there was year no was, women uh, in Shinsuke and Nakamura. So to you, that was the best show for you. But for me, the best the best thing of the night was all four of them in that four-way match. And watching Stephanie Because the women were the in there? Yeah. Charlotte took on Asuka. Uh, that's and that, overplayed. And ended the streak. Yeah, and yeah. Ended the, everybody knew overplayed. that was going to happen. That was the first time they that ever fought each other. That was predicted. It was predicted. And everybody knew. Match, yeah. And that, that match was, was blown? That was so, I okay. knew that would happen. Let's talk about predictability. You knew. You really thought Stephanie and Triple H were going to beat Angle and Rousey? No, I totally knew Ronda okay, and Rousey so then, were going to beat them. So then, but the match was so good that you didn't get bored watching it. I got bored watching Charlotte Flair and Asuka. It could have been a better match. They didn't reach their full potential. They could have done way better because they are both high- High awesome athletes who have a, what's that, what do you call it? Like a respect of themselves of how they are in the ring. And they didn't even bring it to what they can do. To me, the match was slow, it was sloppy, and they could have done better. It was boring. You, how, to me, it was know. a boring match. I, oh, they could have done I, better. I want examples of sloppiness, first of all. I want oh, examples yes, of the best sense. spots in the Triple H, Stephanie, Kurt Angle match. Pull the videos out and I'll show you each and every spot like I do when no, we if, watch if, it. If you room. can recall that this stuff was so say, good. You always <sighs> say, oh, Sasha makes so sloppy. Well, maybe it's not her. Maybe it's the other person. Yeah. Like, you all, because you get so like, oh, I don't like this person, so I'm going to point out everything bad that they do. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll come back. We're going to come back to this nonsense because we really got to talk about SCW. <laughs> okay, I'll be quiet. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Are we done with freaking five? <laughs> yeah, we're done with freaking five. God that was damn. fun. Right? I really enjoyed myself. We're not, the show's not over. Oh. The show's over for her. <laughs> Holy shit. All right. Um, SCW came out with the, uh, the full match card uh, yesterday morning uh, for SCW Mayhem happening out in Clifton today. Uh, Which we will be at tonight. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta figure out how far the drive is out there. Clinton? Like, it's the next it's exit. It's like 45 it's like, minutes. It's like an extra 10 minutes. Yeah, it's the next exit after she Yeah, I just drove there. Um, Are you gonna be part of these predictions? Sorry. <laughs> I got excited. No, that's a legit question. I'm asking you. Are you gonna be part of these predictions? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> when did you go to Clifton? You had the champagne. <laughs> yeah, well, I passed Clifton. Jesus it's like the Christ. same thing. You see, like the. Alright, <laughs> okay, so SCW yeah. Mayhem. Okay, so. You got the official match card, uh, the Revolt's taking on the family. Uh, I'm going to take the family. That sounds exciting. Can you guys elaborate more on the match? I didn't see it, so I don't know what happened. Neither are we. This is what's happening tonight. Oh, I was going to say, like, the history before the match. Like, Yeah. You know? See, and that's, the, and that's, that's the awesome thing, but also the unfortunate thing when it comes to independent wrestling is there's no storyline, there's no build-up to so a lot of things. Oh, okay. So, like, the family and the Revolt, there is no build-up from, like, a previous, like, Show that we saw at least. Now, if they did something at a different, like you know, venue or different companies like that, then maybe there's a history there. Um, I've never seen a revolt uh, wrestle. I think you may have. No, the revolt is uh, Andy and his partner. Is that their names? Yeah, the revolt. Yeah, I thought the revolt were like good people. No, <laughs> it's Andy. Is it? Yeah, Andy. They call themselves the revolt. Yeah, I don't remember the other guy's name. Ah, oh, God, I thought they were called like putrid or some shit. <laughs> Are they that? Petri. Petri dish. Petri? God. Um, okay. Oh, so that's them? Yeah. Okay, I'm going with the family. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Is My that, big bad brother. Well, see, I think, like, because they don't even, like, really, I mean, it, is it Jake Andrews and Ivan then? I'm not sure. It doesn't yeah. say. It... That's fine. Um, they also signed yesterday morning, uh, Shaw Mulligan's taking on Angus, Angus McDuff. <gasps> yeah, I saw Angus, Angus throwing. Angus the only guy she knows on card. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and he's a dumpster fire, so it makes sense. He sucks. He is number one. He used to be cool, man. He used to be, yeah, he's yeah, he used to be, be so cool. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, no. You guys don't know like I do. We have a connection. Gross. So, I like how you whisper like the Yeti doesn't <laughs> bring him in my... He thinks I doesn't know. Wait, that um, Okay, so... Sean Morgan's saying I think it's just tough. Obviously, I'm pretty sure Marche's going to be in Sean's corner. And I'm pretty sure Dan Holly Lines is going to be in Angus's. So, what do you uh, got? I'm going to go Mulligan. 
I'm gonna go McDuck then. You guys go against each other for <laughs> not always. Oh, okay. So uh, when we do like the pay per view predictions, we've been doing them before we come to the show. That yeah, way, it doesn't those sweat. those count towards the contest. Yeah, those... These, this is more just like a extra just for fun kind of thing. Oh, okay. Because it's really hard to kind of like really determine a winner or something without a storyline built up. Understandable. Uh, so your table match: the Sheik versus Sergeant Brooks. Uh, I'm taking Brooks. I'll take Sheik. Sheik's always got the unholy alliance with him. So it's it's unless Brooks has a stable all of a sudden or. Maybe calls in a couple army buddies to have him bring him in. Something. What's a holy alliance? Unholy alliance is uh, the Sheik, uh, Angus McDuff, and the uh, amazing they, Amazon. Yeah. The, the oh, so they come Kramer. out with them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're, it's their faction. Oh, that's cool. Uh, return match. Uh, R.K. Savage taking on Jay Harris. Ooh. Ooh. This is the one where I know this was match. This is match. Yeah. yeah. One. What was it? Last month. Yep. Yeah, I'm going with Harris. I'm going to go with Savage. I think if his manager's out there, then he probably would have a better opportunity. Um, it's not noted on here, but was it mentioned last month that it was supposed to be a no-DQ match? I I thought it was. I could be mistaken, but maybe something changed. Because Savage wasn't too interested, it seemed, at the time to have another match with Harris. Yeah. Uh, SCW heavyweight ma- uh, title match, Maverick Cage versus Max Holiday. Ooh, Max Holiday from ARW. Yeah. I'll take Holiday. Yeah? Yeah. The bearded bruiser. Kind of got that Brody bruiser look to him. Or bruiser Brody. Brody bruiser? Yeah. <laughs> Easy to marry. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, fuck. <laughs> I wonder if, um... I wonder how much... Because I... Has it been determined if uh, Holiday is considered an ARW guy? Because we did see him at the ARW show. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming because I I haven't seen him at SCW. Yeah. But that doesn't mean anything. I don't want to see Cage. I'm going to go with Cage. Why the hell not, right? He beat up Raps. Yeah. Finally, which I'm hoping this is the main event, we got a fatal four-way match to determine the first ever SCW Women's Champion with Natasha Crane taking on Paloma Star, taking on Casey Dillon. Take it on Moxie Molly. Nice. Wow. Uh, Sounds like a Dylan? great match. You're taking Dylan? I think so. Casey Dylan? I think she was. Was that the one with the freaky face paint? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that one. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna pick uh, Molly. I think Molly's had a good run, but I think you can't go undefeated the whole time. No, and I, and I agree, but I mean, like, you know, seeing how, like, you know, because, I mean, she not only fought, like, you know, other women of the independent circuit, but she's also fought men. She fought Cage. Granted, she did lose, but, I mean, I'm sure she put up a fight. And she, was, she was in the Battle Royal, too, so yeah, she yeah. had a good run on that. Yeah. Um, also noted here, uh, Hunter Payne's going to be there. James Creed's going to be there. Gino Latino's going to be there. Santana Stark, Bo Anderson, Max Blaylock, and, uh, of course, many more. Again, SCW Mayhem is uh, tonight in Clifton Commerce Center. Uh, let's see here. Clifton Commerce Center is 345 East 4th Avenue in Clifton, Illinois. Doors open at 6, bells at 7. Tickets are $12 at the door because I'm pretty sure pre sales over. So. Yeah. And I, do that. I think they're doing the mul- multiple sclerosis. Yeah. MC. Yeah. MS. MS. MS, MS is their... Uh, yeah. This is their fun, uh, fundraiser. Their charity this this month. Yeah. Almost set this week. Uh, which they always do a charity, which is great. Mm-hmm. Uh, very family-friendly show. 12 bucks is less money than you're going to spend at the movie theater. Yep. So, super excited for that. Uh, fuck, I'm going to try to think it. So, you pretty much fucking shot your load off early earlier this week when I, uh, we were talking about this. What, do you want to talk about a big announcement, or you want me to do it? Big yeah, go ahead. I like I like when you yeah. do big announcements. You you got that uh, announcement yeah. voice. Yeah, got that voice. <laughs> got that I voice. Got the, <laughs> I got that voice. <laughs> but I did I did erase the post. I know. So it, I, know. It did finally get, I, I was just so excited. That's what I mean. you want me to share? No. <laughs> oh, like, it, it's not, it's not even ah, so like, me erase. Seriously, it's not even like you said. Like, do you want me to share? Just like, or you didn't say like I'm sharing. Like, do you want me to share? And you just did it. Well, you didn't tell me it was a secret. 
Communication goes both ways, guys. <laughs> Not talking about you. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Just work on your horse hair, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I have it. I almost got the mat out. I'm so proud of you. Thanks. Yeah. It wasn't my real hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, actually a couple couple of new things happening with uh, JFW. And not only affecting JFW, but also uh, affecting this freaking show, which is my other podcast uh, that I do. Um, we developed a new um, network for our podcasting. Yes. Uh, so... Like from now on, and there's actually probably going to be some like intro plugs and stuff like that that may be incorporated in our shows going forward. But now, uh, just freaking wrestling and this freaking show fall under the same umbrella of uh, Freak Night Studios. That's awesome. So uh, we were going to go freaking network, um, which is still pretty cool. That's something we can probably use later on. But I think Freak Night Studios will help us uh, in more of an aspect of uh, you know the YouTube that we want to do and stuff like that. Now, freaking network we still use is like a podcast thing that could be, you know, again, under right. the umbrella of Freaknet Studios. But Freaknet Studios is now um, the accumulation of JFW and this freaking show. Still separate entities, but together as they right. are. Um, and it's also an opportunity for other podcasting um, hosts uh, who have their own shows and stuff who are looking to be part of the community. They could join up. Uh, this is open, you know, to your podcast. You just let us know if you're interested in it, and um, we'll talk and kind of figure it out. Um, we really don't have a structure or a, an idea of like what kind of podcast we want on here, what we don't. I actually have an idea for a podcast. But I want to run by you and tell you what you think. It's not for us, no. but it's it's a woman-based podcast. So if I could find two women who would do this podcast, it's fucking phenomenal. But I'll tell you about it. I'll saw I'm off the show. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, so if you have a podcast, um, and you think like, Hey, you know, I'll be part of a podcast network and all this other stuff, you know, let us know, you know, you can message us and say, Hey, listen, you know, I have this podcast, you know, I'll be part of freak net, freak net studios and stuff like that. And we'll try to work it out. We don't want to, you know, accept everybody. You know, we do want it to be some kind of, ex- you know, exclusiveness, but yeah, a way a to kind of, a lot of yeah, variety. Yeah. A way to work together and kind of like help each other, like, you know, like, you know, promote our brands and get ourselves out there. But the biggest thing that happens now with Freaknet Studios is we finally got our merchandise. Yes. We finally have yes. merchandise. We were talking about it. We did the polls. We did the questions and everything on the uh, the Facebook and everything on what kind of you know merchandise you guys want and everything. We didn't take that into consideration whatsoever. Uh, we decided to do the shit on our own. <laughs> we did what we wanted. <laughs> yeah. So and it was the easiest way. So now we have a... Um, we have a new, uh, pretty much it's a store. It's like an Etsy store or, or what's that, whatever it's fucking called. <laughs> but it's tpublic.com. So now we have merchandise and everything at tpublic.com. When you get tpublic.com, all you got to do is search JFW. Literally that easy. You get to the main uh, page, you search JFW. It's going to pull up all our JFW shirts. Um, it's made by uh, Freaking Network. So you can look at the list. We have the, uh, we have the current logo we have for JFW. Except the only difference is the banner we have on our shirts, which are the original, only made, never going to be made again shirts. The original uh, border of it is white. Yeah, ours are the white. Sh- the shirt's going to be red border, but it's going to have white lettering. Um, we're going to have the travesty shirt, the original freak travesty shirt. Mr. 3% Dizzle J is going to be on there. 33%. <laughs> well, that's Mr. 3%. Yeah, after fucking today? Yeah. You're, unlucky. You're like, I don't make that a goddamn yeah. O. Oh. Like a one third. <laughs> um, and, uh, we also have the, uh, the awesome hashtag F Steve shirt. Hashtag F Steve. Which, uh, if you guys don't remember, Steve was a guy who used to run his mouth a lot, uh, when we started podcasting back in the day. And I went back, because we're doing our 50s episode, I kind of want to go back and I wanted to listen to our shows and hear what we yeah. talked about, see if we were achieving what we wanted and everything. And there was a lot of times when we were talking about hashtag fuck Steve, hashtag F Steve. You know, like Steve was running his mouth and where's Steve at now and shit like that. Fun fact also, and a lot of those hashtag F Steve, uh, F Steve uh, episodes, we fucking praised Andy Black. Really? Yeah. Like he was a good guy. It all went downhill though when he said we had to beg him to uh, come on our show. Oh. It was that point where it kind of went downhill. And then he smacked the pop out of my hand. Right, yeah. So we have the, uh, we have the uh, hashtag F Steve shirt that's also on the uh, website. So we have now, right now we have four different shirts that you guys can choose from. Um, it's also, like I said, it's an association with my show, so my shirts are on there as well, but wrestling fans, focus on the wrestling ones. 
Focus on the JFW. Focus on the Travis Steve, the Mr. 33%, and the hashtag F Steve. Simple, easy. It is tpublic.com, T-E-E-P-U-B-L-I-C.com, and just search JFW. It'll pop right up. They look awesome, too. They look yeah. amazing. That was all, like a great little rap you did. All, all designed by Travis Steve himself. Yeah. Yeah, and it was hard. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not gonna fucking lie. You I had to think, didn't you? It was <laughs> annoying as fuck to do it, but I'm happy I did it. And you know what? It finally gives us like you know what we want. Right. So, that was great. Very creative, sir. I'm gonna have to go order, order my own shirt. Well, you got you still got time to uh, get on the deal. It's a 35 percent off uh, store wide. Oh man, I might get an F Steve yeah. shirt. Hashtag F Steve. Yeah. Right? Hashtag. Yeah. Oh, and that's the thing too. It's not. It's not even just T-shirts. You go to this website, you get any of these logos on either a t-shirt, a tank top, a sweatshirt, a hoodie, a baseball shirt, a baby onesie. Um, you get it on coffee mugs, uh, travel mugs, uh, phone cases, laptop cases. You get them on tapestries. Uh, you get posters. Fucking, um, what well, the hell am I We missing? just kind of nailed everything in one wow. shot then. It's everything, yeah. I mean, I'll show, you, I'll, show, I'll show you in live time what I can fucking do. So let's say I go to the fucking JFW, Just Freaking Wrestling, and I click on this, uh, you know, this fucking logo. Oh, yeah, pretty cool. Right there on the shirt. Yeah. There's, I don't know, I, I'm just going to ballpark. There's probably like 15, maybe 20 fucking different colors there. There you are. For shirts. Yes. Uh, different sizes, obviously. Uh, for the bigger men like us, it goes all the way up to 5XL. Oh, that's awesome. So that's pretty cool. But you know, all you do Price is... does increase, though, as you go up to those. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. So we have uh, tank tops, long sleeve t-shirts, baseball shirts, crew neck sweatshirts, hoodies, kid t-shirts, kid hoodies, kid long sleeves, and onesies. Phone cases, laptop cases, stickers, wall art, notebooks, mugs, pillows, totes, and tapestries. Tapestries. Yeah. yeah we could get a tapestry, give it to the hippies to take out when they go to their hippie festivals. We could get that. Oh, we could hang it behind camp. us when we do podcasting at live events. Ooh. Right? Or we could get a fucking wall art. But the, oh, the, one thing, the one thing I think I'm super excited for is the fact that, I mean, there's stickers here. So that's pretty fun. <gasps> there's that's stickers? Awesome. Oh. Yeah. Decorate every, my car. And everything, uh, everything here, like I said, all the, there's, uh, I think it relates to just this freaking show. I didn't, like, it only has, like, t-shirts and stuff only. But right now, everything is available. Um, go ahead and check it out. Again, that's, uh, tpublic.com, T-E-P-U-B-L-I-C.com, and just search JFW. This is 33% stickers. Oh, that's, oh awesome. that's great. Yeah. And, uh, of course, the cool thing is uh, the Mr. 33% shirt is front and back. The same thing with the hashtag F Steve is front and back. So. That's great. Yep. Yeah. So we're definitely going to look at making new shirts and more shirts, get some new designs and everything. But this is a starting point for us. Um, if you go there, again, buying the shirts from this website helps us out and helps us grow and doing a lot more things. So, And I'm also really happy with the FreakNet uh, Studios because that's going to kind of help us to – to get our name out there under one thing to where YouTube videos will happen a lot more and stuff right. like that. Where we have our own, like, Fox. Yeah. Um, cool. Let's uh, let's go ahead. Um, well, you got your... Uh, My match of the week? Yeah, your match of the week. DJ, so, D- uh, DJ's pick, Dizzle. Dizzle, Dizzle pick. J's pick of the week. Dizzle, Dizzle Wow, picks. that is a tongue twister. Fucking Diz, Diz pick. Diz pick. <laughs> I always get in trouble for sending Diz picks. Diz pick. Diz picks. Diz picks. <laughs> Uh, so I picked Lita versus Victoria in a steel cage match in Raw. Uh, there wasn't much build up to this match. It was, I think, Lita had just came back from injury mm-hmm. or got fired. And it was uh, Bischoff who was in control. They had the, the wheel, the Raw roulette yeah. wheel. So that, they got stuck in the cage match. And it got me thinking about how now they're doing hell in the cells and stuff like that. And I mean, these two went at each other. Throwing each other in the rings. They, they weren't doing a lot of the stuff the guys do at that time. But still, they took a lot of hits into the ring. Uh, Matt Hardy, at one point in time, slams the door on Lita in her face. It, it was just neat to see a women's cage match. I think that was the first women's cage match on Raw. Yep. So, check it out. It'll post later today with the show. Yep. Let me know what you think. Cool. All right. Let's end the show with um, final freaking thought. Uh Mary, if you have a, a response to this, you can as well. Uh, you say you did hear last week's show, so you have an idea how it works. Well, I'm just gonna give. I'm just. Let me, I'll explain it. <laughs> Gosh, I, I can't. Like, we didn't get that far. Easy there, third. God. Third. Gosh. Um. So every week, one of us is gonna uh-huh. pick ten topics. Uh, we're just gonna read them off, and it's your final opinion on it. It's not a debate. It's not anything like that. It's just 
a final thought. Just make it brief and a quick, you know, just response to it. So Okay. Uh Gal- I got yeah. it. Yeah. Really? Uh, <laughs> Gallows and Anderson being pulled from live events reporting turning down contract to resign. What did you say? To resign WWE? Yeah. They turned on uh, resigning and they got pulled from live events. Good for them. They I, I, they were never used right with WWE. <laughs> I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> like I heard you, but I didn't. Cody Rhodes files for trademark on Dusty Rhodes and American Dream. Wow. That's awesome. That's sad. Baron Corbin's Kurt Angle's main, uh, main opponent. Bullshit. Baron Cor- Corbin is who? Gargano and Cole are in a two out of three falls NXT title uh, match at NXT TakeOver. That's going to be great. I think that will probably be a match tonight for them. No opinion. <gasps> AJ Styles contract extension. Oh, I love worst. the way he announced it. Right? We also got a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> I got this puppy. Also, signed the contract. Um, Rhonda's husband getting involved in the storyline. Stupid. I like it. Sting uh, willing to come out of retirement to face The Undertaker. Stupid. I like it. Think so? If it had been 10 years ago, down. But now it's just like two geriatrical men going at it in the ring. Brief. AEW opens audition for librarian uh, gimmick. I dig it. I think that's going to be boring. You know, anyone can do it. All I got to do is send a minute long uh, video of promoing as a librarian. It's literally open take to books anybody. All day. Really? Yep. And file. Bully Ray says Gargano should stay in NXT in order to flourish instead of moving up to Raw or SmackDown and getting lost in the shuffle. Probably right. Yeah. I, I agree. Okay. When will Hunter Payne step up and be the leader that SCW needs? Never. Like you know. I do. <laughs> His wife will do it for him. I, I'm hoping soon. If if not tonight, it's, it's got to be soon because I believe Hunter has got to be that face of them. SCW. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Just Freaking Wrestling. Let all your wrestling friends know. They can find our shows on iTunes, Google Play, Podbean, and Spotify just by searching Just Freaking Wrestling or JFW Podcast. Make sure you check out our merchandise at tpublic.com, T-E-E-P-U-B-L-I-C.com, and then just search JFW and all our merchandise will come up. That's all I got. How about you? Time to ring the bell in this episode. Perfect. As always, I am Travesty. I'm Dizzle J. And we were here with Mental Mary. <laughs> and thank you for listening to another episode of Just Freaking Wrestling, the JSW Podcast. Peace. Bye.